and welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. Many of you know him as the baseball legend from the Lone Star State. Or perhaps fans know him in their cherished memories as Big Puma, the switch-hitting six-time All-Star, World Series champion, National League Comeback Player of the Year, and RBI leader. Today, we're looking into the many passions of the talented Lance Berkman. He's a dedicated family man, baseball player, coach, and now an American rancher. So sit back, grab some Cracker Jacks, and don't go anywhere. We've got quite a treat lined up for you when we come back here on The American Rancher. At 44 Farms, we believe work starts at sunup and doesn't stop until sundown. We believe in order to live off the land, you have to love and respect it. We believe that cattle aren't just raised, they're nurtured. And we believe when you do things right, with honesty and integrity, well, things like quality and consistency happen naturally. 44 Farm Steaks, responsibly raised all natural beef. You're looking for livestock equipment, whether it be permanent or portable, call Ackerman Distributing at 1-800-726-9091. They are number one in the nation with portable wheel krills. Also handle portable tubs and portable alleys, double alleys, loading chutes, manual chutes, hydraulic chutes. AckermanDistributing.com 1-800-726-9091 Welcome back to the American Rancher. According to Lance's father, the younger Berkman never really stood a chance. He was marked for baseball before he ever left the crib. I'm more than a baseball fan. I think uh, I grew up playing baseball. It was my favorite sport and I, I, uh, I've always wanted to play at a high level and when Lance was first able to toddle around, I guess I started rolling a tennis ball to him just to see what he'd do. And, watch how he picked it up and threw it back to d decide whether he was going to be a left-hander or a right-hander. So he really didn't have much of a chance to do much else except play baseball because I directed that from, from his earliest <laughs> infancy, really, until, uh, until now even. I guess we talk baseball all the time. Dad's kind of a baseball psycho. He, he's really passionate about baseball and he loves horses and, and, the, and he loves to work. So th those three things um, are things that, that really light his fire. And from a young age, I mean, I don't really have a recollection of not switch hitting because I was so young. He just, you know, he would, I have pictures of me in the backyard with a Snoopy, red Snoopy bat, you know, wasn't bigger in a minute and swinging left and right. And of course, having a great dad who's involved and who takes the time to teach you those things and spends time with you. Um, is invaluable and certainly he got me off on the, the right track there. Lance has a clear understanding of what it takes to excel in your endeavors. Determination and a fierce competitiveness drove the South Texas native to great heights on the baseball diamond. When Lance does something, it's not 100%, it's 110. So he is gonna be or try to be the, the best at whatever he's doing. So. Um, I always just was amazed by the intensity, the, just his work ethic, and um, it was never good enough. He just, he challenged in himself in a way I've never seen anybody do before. Um, I remember one game particularly, he was like four for five and had like six RBIs, and it was just, that never happens, you know, that many RBIs in one game. and. I said, babe, what a great game. He goes, it's over. Tomorrow's a new day, new game. Professionally, I mean, certainly the highlight of my entire career uh, was winning that World Series and just the fashion that we won it. I mean, it was a tremendous World Series against the Texas Rangers and they had a really good team also and uh, went to seven games and, you know, you can't ask for, for anything better than that, especially when we came out on top. Um, and, you know, that's, like I say, that's probably the, the highlight of my whole major league career. You know, he just played it. He played the game the right way. He went about it and he went, uh, he worked at it pretty hard and had fun doing it. And 
So I, I'm just, I couldn't really be prouder of his baseball career, but, I, but I'm mostly proud of him because of who he is and the character he has. While the fame and honors were plenty, Berkman cherishes the lifelong friends he's made playing the game above all. The, I think the, the, the greatest blessing that, that I've, besides my wife and kids that I've, that I've had, has just been the guys that I've gotten a chance to know through baseball and that I've gotten a chance to play with. And, you know, Andy Pettit's one of my good buddies, and, you know, he's, he's a guy, he's another guy that I look up to and admire, and he's like an older brother, even though he's, you know, he's not but four years older than I am. Um, and he's, he's on my coaching staff, he's my pitching coach. And, uh, but but th those kind of friendships that you develop throughout the course of your career uh, are the ones that, that just really stand out to me. Because these are guys that, you know, people may not remember or have forgotten about, but um, those relationships are, are really special. We all know Lance on the baseball diamond, but when we come back, we're gonna hang up those cleats slip on our boots, and get to know Lance on the ranch. Superior Livestock is proud to announce a new partnership with Biozyme Inc. Since 1995, value-added calf programs have created premiums when calves sell on Superior's video auctions. Traditionally, when ranchers think of adding value, it is derived from a quality health program dependent upon vaccinations. But together, Superior and Biozyme are putting a new twist on creating premiums for healthier cattle through a mineral supplement program. Healthier cattle are more profitable, and now cattle that have been fed a Vitafirm or GainSmart Amifirm-based mineral supplement for a minimum of 45 days prior to auction will receive the Vitafirm or GainSmart value-added logo in Sapir's catalogs and on-screen as the cattle sell. Vitafirm raised targets cow-calf producers and is for calves that are raised on a Vitafirm fed dam and or was fed a Vitafirm mineral themselves during preconditioning for a minimum of 45 days prior to the auction and through delivery. GainSmart targets stalker, feeder, and backgrounding operators and will recognize calves that have been fed a GainSmart mineral for a minimum of 45 days prior to auction and through delivery. For more information, go to superiorlivestock.com or call 800-422-2117. Welcome back to the American Rancher. After winning a World Series and retiring from a stellar career in baseball in 2011, Berkman shifted his sights towards his lifelong dream, owning and operating a ranch. Well, I could, I, I could make a case that the only reason I played Major League Baseball is to be able to afford a ranch, because that's been a goal of mine for a long time, is to, uh, is to be able to have my own place. and. Being on the ranch, being outdoors is who he is. So when we're here, um, I just know it's, he just feels right at home. Um, he loves the projects. He loves visions for, for things to, to still, that needs to be done. Um, he loves land. So he ju he's just happy. It's peaceful and it's, um, it's fun to see that side of him. It's, there's a book called Wild at Heart, and with being raised with a dad and three brothers, I know how important it is for men to be men and to be outdoors and to just work hard and sweat and work on a project, and, and I think that's healthy and I think that's important. So um, Lance is happiest here on the ranch. We've always had cattle, you know, we've always had uh what I would say a token herd, um, but as we have kind of gone along with this ranch, we've really kind of turned it into more of a, a cattle operation. We've gotten more into that side of things, and you know, there's still plenty of deer to hunt in the hill country for sure, but uh, our focus has shifted a little bit from deer to Hereford cattle. Three years, we started, you know, kind of researched, hey, where's, you know, where's the best genetics that we can find, and uh, so I think we've put together a pretty good set of cows for to start and we've invested in a couple of high-end bulls and um, so we're just kind of getting started in the in the the Hereford breed industry. The reason we decided on Herefords is because my great-grandfather uh, was a polled Hereford breeder, registered polled Hereford breeder back in the 30s and 40s and actually my mom uh, came across some old stock certificates that we have from the American Hereford Association and some of their registered animals that they had. Uh, and I think the earliest one is 1937. They have a little certificate on a bull. I looked at, looked up, tried to find his pedigree, but you know, I don't know if the records go back that far. Uh, so anyway, uh, my grandfather took that over from, uh, from my great grandfather and he did it for a while and uh, then ended up fighting in World War II. And when he came back, uh, that was 
of course right before the big drought of the 50s and uh, so they, they ended up getting out of the, the cattle business and he got into the nursery and landscaping business. So, but Hereford cattle have been in my family for a long time and not, not a con in a continuous way, but certainly that history is appealing to me and uh, just that's why I have an affinity for that breed and that's why we decided to, uh, you know, to go with the Herefords and it's been great. You know, we've had, um, I think we're, we're well on our way to establishing a, a really good herd and it's fun just to, to try to make a better animal. We started off with about 15 Van Newkirk heifers and, and from there we've grown to about 85 registered cows and we've got about 30 recip cows here on the place and then we also utilize our neighbor's place which he has about 80 Angus cows that we can use to put embryos in. Um, we, uh, we bought some heifers from Churchill and we bought some heifers and cows from Jack Holden up in Montana and, and uh, uh, Guy Collier and, and the Barbers for sure, they've definitely influenced our herd and we really like what, what they've done and, and we're probably taking a little bit of what they've, how far they've come and, and we're going to try to expand on that in our own little twist of, twist of, of ways and, and see where that ends up taking us and hopefully they'll, they'll reciprocate back to us sooner or later and, and come down to one of our sales one of these days. You can't run a place without a guy like Bry Hickman. He's, he's um, I always joke around with him, like I, I leave for six months, don't call him or talk to him and then come back and everything's you know, in perfect working order. He, he runs this place uh, virtually by himself and that's a, that's a huge uh, task and he does a tremendous job and finding somebody that you can trust that um, you know that's honest that'll give you a good day's work and does exactly what he's supposed to do all the time is it's a rare commodity so again you know it goes back to people and getting to work with with great people and, and Bryce certainly uh, a huge part of our I mean I consider him part of our family but certainly a huge part of what we're doing here and we'll continue to do going forward. You might ask, what is there in common between professional baseball and ranching? Well, it turns out there's more than we thought. We asked the six-time All-Star what it's like to go from player to general manager. And when you're talking about performance, whether it be a cow performing uh, or, or a bull performing or whether you're talking about an athlete performing, it's, it's all genetic based. I mean, you can't just pull somebody off the street, stick them in a big league uniform and run them out on the field even if they had a lot of training. You know, there's a certain genetic component to it that, that, that God is responsible for, and it has nothing to do with how hard you work or how much you want it, but it's just either there or it's not. And I think you can see the same thing in, in, uh, in the cattle. And, you know, a lot of times you'll see right away, hey, that's a special animal. And you can also see the flip side, like, eh, that one's not gonna make the cut. So, and, and that way it is very similar where you're, you have your herd, you have a team, and you're culling based on what your, uh, your standards are. And, and the fun part of me is everybody's got different standards. You know, what, what I'm looking for or breeding for might be something totally different. And so it's, I think the analogy is, is apt, looking at it as a general manager and trying to figure out, okay, you know, we, we might be a little bit weak here. I'm, I need a shortstop or I need a catcher. I need somebody that can run. Or, you know, I, I need, you know, to, to put a little, uh, more mass down through their through their hocks, you know, and so we need more length, and so we're going to breed for that, or we need more carcass traits, or we need, you know, it's whatever whatever it is that you're looking for, and then you go, you know, you find your bull and and you find your set of cows, and hopefully, you know, the cross works. While the ranch is home to progressive genetic development, it serves a larger purpose entirely, keeping four young girls happy and enjoying time with their dad. Lance has often said that his greatest achievements are his wife and children. For them, the ranch is a place where they can come and enjoy fellowship together. After we had Hannah, who's our oldest, and she turned 16 this, this past May, and, and then, then we had Carly in 2003, and we had Katie in 2006, and then we had Abby in 2009. So, uh, estrogen factory at the house for sure, uh, but it's it's great, you know, they're, they're You'll, you know, children are, are the light of life. They bring so much joy uh, to, to their parents. And we just, you know, my wife and I sit there and we talk about them all the time and just how tickled we get at some of the things they say and do. 
Uh, to be able to get out and to be able to have the girls outside the city and around ag to me is very important um, just just so they'll be well-rounded. I mean, I want them to be able to saddle a horse and I want them to know uh, how to, to be around, uh, you know, the, just I don't want them to be ignorant to the things of the country because, you know, I, I wasn't raised on a ranch, but we were at the time that I grew up in, in Southwest Austin, you know, we were close enough to the hill country. We'd be out here a lot on the weekends. And, and so I'd already mentioned, you know, ag in my background. And um, so I just feel like the, the, the closeness to the land and to the country and to the ag industry is, is something that's really important. So what I usually do around here is like when Carly comes to the horses, I sometimes drive with her and get out my pony and start jumping her. Um, and, and sometimes I get out little sweets and um, guide her. And when I come out here, I usually just ride horses. Then at the heat of the day, I go swimming with my sisters in the lake. And I'm just always around the horses. I like to play card games and I like to practice softball with him since I don't like to play softball. Lance does not take lightly his blessings in life and is known for his steadfast generosity. Named one of the top 10 most generous celebrities by Forbes magazine, he is no stranger to charity work and has extended his hand internationally. You know, you look at in Matthew chapter 6 where uh, Jesus tells, he's right at sort of in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and he says that don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but instead, you know, store treasure in heaven where moth and rust can't destroy it and where thieves won't break in and steal. And he says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. My wife and I were <clears throat> trying to instill with him the you know values of uh, uh, to be a good Christian, to be a good person as well as a good athlete. And I think he is, and that's always been, a, I've always been a little, very proud of him for that as well as for being a good baseball player. So I think he is generous with, um, with the money he's been able to make as a professional baseball player. Uh, he is uh, very compassionate. And I think he believes in trying to in trying to spread uh, the gospel where it hasn't gone before. He's kind of passionate about spending money overseas for that kind of program. Uh, as we have, my wife and I have seen opportunities uh, where we thought he might make a contribution that would be helpful, uh, we've presented it to him in almost every time that we've talked to him about it. He's pulled the trigger and, and contributed significant sums to do things uh, for other people. And that's just part of his, I think that's part of his Christian belief. Another form of Berkman's outreach has taken the form of coach. The baseball all-star is now the coach of a high school boys team in Houston. And in his first year of coaching, he led the team to a state title. Lance is a coach. That has been fun for me to watch um, him in this role because it's been, I think this was his third year to be a coach and to watch, I knew he would always be a good coach, um, but to watch him in action with these kids has been really fun for me. Um, it's just a new, different role. And with four girls, he calls the boys his boys. Man, my boys, they weren't on tonight. Or my boys, they were good tonight. And, and I think ultimately, you know, finding that meaning where you're doing something you feel like has importance in the world, uh, that's manufactured for you as a Major League Baseball player. You know, you're on the news and people want your autograph and, you know, you're providing entertainment value or whatever, but you feel like you're making a positive contribution. You have a goal, you have uh, purpose or meaning and then when you when you kind of when you transition out of that when you lose that you're like oh man you know what am I going to do that is going to provide that same kind of that goal or that meaning for me and you know I think uh, ranching is part of that coaching is a, is a big part of that where you feel like you're investing in the lives of young men trying to mold them and shape them and help them be become 
become men. You know, at the high school level, you're you're right there in that transition where you're taking boys, and they're by the time they leave you in high school, they're they're young men. So uh, helping in that transition is tremendously gratifying. Being out here and and um, you know fellowshipping with my family and and being able to uh, fool around in the cattle business is also really gratifying. So it's it's a great life to be able to. I have both of those things that occupy a lot of my time and attention. It's no secret, Lance Berkman is a man of many passions. A good man whose solid values and generosity will no doubt continue to take him to new heights. As for the ranch, you can be sure to keep Owl Creek Ranch on your radar. Because if we know Lance, he's looking to be an all-star in ranching as well. To learn more about Owl Creek Ranch, give Bri a call. You'll be glad you did. To learn more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or find us on Facebook. We'd love to connect with you. I'm Pam Minnick for the entire American Rancher team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. We all know the damages flies can cause to a herd of cattle. Studies conducted by institutions and universities in the United States and Canada show that even small infestations of flies can cause pain, irritation, and weight loss in animals. Economic losses exceed $1 billion a year to American ranchers. In addition, flies cause a decrease in milk production and impair up to 18% of bovine weight gain. But now, Champion USA brought just a fly to the United States. Champion USA is a company originally from Brazil that has been successfully fighting the horn fly for more than 15 years. In that period, more than 30 million head of cattle were treated in Brazil. Just a fly is a feed additive that can be mixed with any supplement that will be ingested by cattle. Anyone can mix it with no special equipment required since it's non-toxic and leaves no residue in meat or milk. No restrictions apply. Justifly is eliminated through cattle feces where it acts against fly larva, preventing its growth and breaking the fly's reproductive cycle. Use Justify properly and behold, a herd without flies. Justify increases ranchers' margins by helping to control the flies. There's a lot of economic impact uh, on milk production and uh, meat production on cattle when they have the nuisance of the flies. So, and it only costs about roughly three cents per head per day for fly control. There's not many other methods of fly control that you can get for that kind of cost. Any ranch, large or small, can and should use Justify, a most effective and high return method to get rid of flies. Highly recommend Justify in the general cattle herd but it's really benefited us in the show barn. And as we wean calves and we put a large number of animals in a confined space, and they've been exposed to this product, we continue that in that space, and it continues to help reduce the stress and helps us with weight gain when those cattle are freshly weaned. Would highly recommend the convenience of the product. Uh, the availability is really good. Not a lot of waste in terms of packaging. We're, we've had great success with it. Want a herd free of flies that can reach its maximum potential? Purchase Just a Fly through championstoreusa.com forward slash shop or amazon.com. You can also ask your local reseller. For more information, call 1-800-898-0987.